Hi, my name is Mike, and in today's video, I'm calling it Forgive Others of Their Sins. An important part of being a true believer in Christ is the act of forgiveness. Uh, Col Colossians 3.13 Bearing with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And Matthew 6.14-15 If you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. See how important it is for believers in Christ to forgive others. When they do evil against us, here are some examples in the scriptures where after much evil was afflicted, true people of God forgave. One example is the Apostle Stephen. And I'll read that. At uh, Acts chapter 7, let me pull up Acts chapter 7, 51 to 60. Uh, 51 to 60. You stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. You who have received the law that was given through angels, but have not obeyed it. When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and a son of man standing at the right hand of God. At this they covered their ears and yelled at the top of their voices. They all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of the young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. So Stephen, even though he was being stoned to death, he said, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. So he forgave them. Another example was um, uh, when Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers. And he forgave them of this. You can read that at Genesis chapter 50, verse uh, 15 to 21, if you want to read that. But uh, who can forget the words used in Luke 23, 34? Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. Imagine, Jesus was whipped, mocked, beaten, crucified and more. And after all that, told his father to forgive them. A perfect example for us to follow as believers in Christ. If we don't forgive others, remember, of their sins, our Father in Heaven will not forgive us of our sins. In Matthew 5, 11 to 12, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in Heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So forgive others and show by your fruits that you are indeed are true believers in Christ. And be perfect even as your heavenly Father is perfect. And I'll finish with Matthew um, 5. So Matthew 5, 43 to 48. Matthew 5, 43 to 48. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are you not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you only greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, 
as your heavenly Father is perfect. So forgive others of their sins and um, carry your cross. Anyway, I'll leave it there and say, uh, anyone out there hasn't come to Lord Jesus, please do so in prayer repentance. God bless you all. Bye-bye.